The first idea that comes to mind when you want to sell something online is to start a shop on Amazon, Shopify, eBay or similar places and sell there. However, I think there are better ways to do this. You can sell online completely for free as long as uh, you are a seller like me who can bring your own marketing, bring your own visitors to your website. So if you bring your own visitors, then you don't need Amazon, you don't need Shopify, you don't need eBay and you don't need their commissions and you don't need to follow the rules. And also you don't have to deal with all the paperwork and trouble that they bring you. For example, in Europe, Amazon and Shopify, they would not pay uh, value added tax on what you pay for their services. Like Shopify charges you $30 a month. But then if you're a small business here in Germany, you have to go to the Finanzamt and pay additionally the VAT on those $30. They also have a lot of rules, like on eBay you cannot start selling internationally right away. You have to start selling domestically first, at least this is how it works for me. And then if you behave well, then they will allow you to sell in more countries and maybe more currencies. So this really is a lot of trouble that they provide. And their service is really not that great. I was using Shopify and it was so slow, incredibly slow, very hard to configure. Of course, if you're a big seller, you want to sell a thousand shampoos per week, then, then this video is not for you. But if you're a small maker uh, like me, who a few items per week, then I have some tips for you. Okay, so the preconditions for an entire enterprise is that first, you have a unique and desirable product. If your product is not unique, if it's just some generic white label stuff from China, I don't think this is going to work and I do not advise you even try, because there is just too much of this stuff. Uh, if your product is not desirable, then obviously you wouldn't be able to sell it, so there is no need to go through all the trouble. You can have the best product that solves your, the problem of the user amazingly, but the user just doesn't know that your product exists. So by all means, you need to have some marketing. I tried running some Microsoft ads and I just wasted money and haven't had a single sale from there, and they were very expensive. I spent $100 and it just provided me nothing. The way to sell products these days is through social media, through entertainment. If you can entertain your viewer and also maybe sell them the product, this is the best way. Of course, it needs time. So if you want to make a YouTube video, this will take a few days of your life um, to make a good video. Or maybe if you're great at it, it shoot it right away and upload it and it will be amazing. This is not how it works for me. Instagram and TikTok, I didn't try those platforms, but I believe they have great potential there as well. And finally, after you have a product marketing, is you need a way to accept payments, of course. You don't want to send out your product for free. Um, for the volume that you would expect in purchases, if uh, one purchase per 1000 view is a good ballpark for uh, most businesses, I think. And this is approximately what I had. A thousand views on your YouTube video and maybe a hundred visits to your web page and one of the hundred visitors will buy something. As I said, relying on paid ads probably is not going to work because it's very expensive to run ads and they are usually shown to people who are not really interested in your product. And if your product has any complexity to it, if it's like more expensive than a ball pen, then the customer probably wouldn't be ready to purchase right away, especially if it, your product is expensive which it should be, because uh, selling cheap product a few items per week is not worth your time at all. The payments you can accept any way you like. I created a business account in PayPal. And uh, here, do not by any means create an account that is tied, that is converted from your consumer account. Create a separate account for your PayPal, all right? And so here it is a little hidden. If you search for PayPal buttons, you will see that there is the web page where they allow you to configure uh, the purchase links. So if you go here and you describe your product and you put the price and then uh, you would just save this and get this payment link. And so this payment link you can email directly to your customer and this is how it will look for them. So the name of my business, then the description of the product, the price, and then they can pay with whatever way they like. Stripe payment link. Stripe also has a very similar system. You can just uh, search for this and you will find a lot of good videos explaining how this works. You also do not have to use those providers. For example, here in Europe, you can just share your IBAN and you can provide a QR code that your customers will scan with their phone and send you the payment. Benefit here is that there is absolutely no commission for incoming payments unless you're using a business account and then your bank will charge a small fee like a 30 cents but that's uh, very little. 
compared to Stripe and PayPal. And perhaps in the countries that you sell to, there are popular payment systems that you can use. And um, this is definitely the customer oriented thing. So you need not where you are, but you need to think where most of your customers are. Now that you have a payment link, uh, in theory, you can just put this in the description on, on your YouTube video and sell right away. However, like you probably also need to put some legal text and you want to put photos of your product and some description and some FAQ, additional information, maybe files. So it's really annoying to put this in every video and especially update it. You would have to go through all of your previous photos and videos and uh, update that stuff. Like if you want to change the price, it's really good to have a standalone website. And there are a lot of uh, services that provide uh, help there, like Wix.com and uh, WordPress. But the simplest way to do this, and the absolutely cheap one, in fact it's free, is to go to GitHub. Now on the GitHub you create an account, and then you create a repository. Now let's call our repository shop, and we don't necessarily need a description. And then we just go and create the repo. <laughs> here right in the browser we can do anything everything that we need so we want to remove this readme file and we want to create a new file called index.html now here we would write our web page but of course uh, we don't want to write it from scratch so Let's go to one of the online chat experiences and ask them to write it for us. With a little bit of tinkering, we can have a pretty decent page generated for us. So now we just copy it from here and go to our GitHub and save it here. Now if we want to add an image on our website, we just drag the image file over here and it will be uploaded automatically. And then we just put the URL over here saying that it's uh, and of course we copy the link and put it over here. Now we go to the source control and say that we want to commit the changes. Our repository, we see that the files are in and now we can edit them even easier. So now we can go over here and click edit file and edit it for us into the settings and then into pages. We need to select the branch main, click save. The, web, the URL for our website is as following. So this is your GitHub username. This is GitHub IO and this is the name of the repository. Now when I click this, it will change. Now it changes because I have a custom domain specified for my GitHub account. I will show how to do this later. Uh, but as you can see, it is already working. There are, of course, bugs, like the link doesn't show as a link, but we can work on that. Just go back to our repo, go to index.html, click edit this file, Now we can see it took approximately half a minute and now this has changed and when I click this link we go to the PayPal and it suggests to make the purchase. When the user makes a purchase you get an email from the PayPal and it would contain the delivery address that the user would have entered. Obviously not everyone is comfortable editing HTML like this, however you can go on websites like Upwork and for a small amount of money like uh, $20 you would be able to get someone to do all of the editing for you or you can buy a one-page HTML template on sites like this. However be advised that after you buy this template you still have to change all the texts and all the images and uh, the layout so it's still a lot of work so maybe you can just directly go to Upwork for this. Now that we have our website uh, let's uh, get a custom domain for it. We go into the settings, pages and then here you would enter your custom domain and here you can search for domain and buy them pretty cheap. Now obviously the bags.com is pretty expensive but um, you can get bags wiki for very little or 
if you are a little creative with your domain name that it can be really cheap so yes bags with bugs info are just three dollars per year now after you purchased your domain you would go to dashboard here in the management dashboard you would select manage on your domain and go to advanced dns and uh, you would specify the following so you would put an a record at a github ip address and then another a record at the second github ip address and then also a CNAME record so that GitHub would know which GitHub pages website they should actually connect to. So here, this is my GitHub username and this is GitHub IO. Now after you save it, it will take approximately 10 minutes or maybe half an hour for this to take effect. And uh, your once you put the custom domain over here, right, so you would just go to your custom domain and that would show the contents of your repository. Now that we figured out how to do custom domain and uh, that now your stuff is hosted completely for free because GitHub doesn't charge you anything and the domain is very cheap. It is maybe $10 a year and websites like Shopify and Wix will charge you much more per month. Next question usually comes up is invoices. So to make invoices, Really the best thing that I found for small time online seller is just to do them in Google Docs. So you go to your Google Drive, create a special folder, and there you create a, just a document where you put a template for yourself. So here, whenever you get a purchase from PayPal, you just put copy paste the customer name and address in here. If you need those invoices at all, right? In some countries, you don't even have to do this. But in Germany, you are required to issue invoices. so. This is how I do it. So you paste the customer address here, increment this number, then adjust the price depending on how much you sold. This is my notice that I'm a small business and uh, change the date here. And that's it. After that, uh, you download this as a PDF and uh, save that PDF, rename that PDF and uh, upload it to this folder so that you have it for tax purposes. For bookkeeping, Ideal for small businesses is just to keep all your incoming and outgoing expenses in a Google Sheet so that you can do your taxes and understand how well your business is doing. You definitely want to have tracking. It's cheaper to send without tracking, but the customer will very soon write you and ask you, hey, where is my stuff? And if you don't have an answer to that, if you don't have a tracking link, then it becomes a very unhappy conversation. So tracking links are absolutely required. The only time my packages were lost in transit was when I was sending packages without tracking. So those were lost. The ones with tracking were never lost. They were sometimes late by a few weeks, but they were never lost. Also try to make shipping free for your customers, which means included in the main price of the product. Because um, from the customer point of view, the shipping is something they do not really need. They want the product. How you get it to them is your problem. Now, at least here in Germany, the package, uh, the package size is absolutely crucial. If your package is uh, rather small uh, and no more than five centimeters tall, uh, then you can use the Varen Post. Varen Post is uh, approximately four to five times cheaper um, than the normal package. You would be able to sell to send to many countries below 10 euros, sometimes as little as uh, five euros. If you want to use the standard package, which is you know a little taller, bigger and fits more products, that would cost uh, 30, 40 euros. If you can make your product thinner <laughs> and fit into a smaller package, this can make or break uh, your entire online business. Something that happened to me several times is when packages, even with tracking, they were delayed and the customers were writing me saying, hey, I think this package is lost. Uh, what should we do? And uh, every time, I think it happened three times, I was, I just mailed uh, the second product free of charge. In all cases, the user has received both products. I was worried about refunds, but turned out they're not a problem at all. For 150 sales, I only had one refund and then the customer actually figured out their problem and they paid me back. So effectively I had no refunds. Of course, big thanks to my customers. Uh, selling stuff online is a lot of work 
and especially if you're selling in small volume and uh, your overall profit for the year will be probably small, then all of this investment, it is the same uh, regardless of whether you sell a thousand products or 10 products, you still need to maintain your website, you need to run the bookkeeping and you need to file for taxes. So you really need to think of uh, how much visitors you get on your marketing channels, on your YouTube or Instagram account. How many purchases will you have? Does it really justify all of the investment and all the learning that you have to do to start this online selling business? And maybe you can make a few items for your friends or to sell in your local community without having to set up uh, this whole thing. Or maybe you can uh, make your product open source so that anyone can build it by ordering parts uh, from GLCPCB or from other just-in-time manufacturers. Running an online business takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of learning. And if you can do all of that uh, and then accept the liability for the stuff that you sold, which is of always a big unknown, if you can pull off all of that, if you can make it work, then you can probably get hired for a pretty good hourly wage. Getting back to your product, uh, what is the margin for your product? Is it uh, $10? It's probably not worth selling at all. Is it uh, $50? Maybe it is. Some customers, they just order and you never hear from them again. But some customers need a lot of support. And the more custom, the more specialized your product is, the more support is needed. So if you spend one hour per product to make it, to assemble and to ship it, and then half an hour for support and another half an hour for paperwork and whatever other administrative tasks, then you spend two hours per sale. If your margin is only $10, then you're effectively working below minimum wage and it is just uh, not worth it. Definitely it's a good exercise to try but if in the end uh, you were working for a year and you lost money then it's just silly so anyway good luck with your business and let me know in the comments if i missed something or if there are better alternatives ciao